What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be uploading my college football playoff and New Year's Six Bowl game predictions before week nine. This is the last week here in the college football season uh, where we uh, are going to be having only the AP and Coaches Bowl because starting next week on November the 1st, the first college football playoff committee rankings get released. And we're going to see how the committee is evaluating all the teams in the nation so far this year. But uh, hey, so, some few minor changes here, but the, the, nothing really earth shattering uh, in this week's edition of the playoff and New Year's Six Bowl game prediction. So hopefully this is a shorter video than these videos usually are. But before we dive in, I would really appreciate it if you guys would like, comment, subscribe, and do anything you can to help support the channel. It really does mean a lot to me, and it helps grow what I'm trying to accomplish here on YouTube. So whatever you can do to help support, I really do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and move on now into my playoff and New Year's Six bowl game predictions. And as usual, we're going to start with my playoff field. And I'm going to be flat honest with you guys, nothing's changed. I still got Ohio State and Clemson here in the Fiesta Bowl. And I'll talk about this one for a little bit. Ohio State in their last game dominated Iowa. I know the offense looked maybe not as crisp as some people would have thought. But this is still a really good Ohio State team. This is a really fun Ohio State team to watch and well they're going to get a big road test this week when they go on the road in Happy Valley uh, it's the big noon kickoff game against Penn State which should be an absolutely fascinating game to watch so definitely see how Ohio State handles that one uh, and what they're able to do there uh, to go ahead and beat Penn State if that is the case uh, meanwhile Clemson has all about locked up the ACC Atlantic with that win over Syracuse they now have tiebreakers over Wake Forest NC State, Syracuse, uh, Boston College, and Florida State. So you still got Louisville coming out of that division. Miami is still on the schedule, and you have a couple non-conference games against Notre Dame and South Carolina, which are going to provide some really interesting tests. Now, Clemson is on by this week, but they've all about locked up a trip to the ACC championship game, and uh, unless chaos is going to reign, uh, Clemson should find themselves in the college football playoff. I have them playing Ohio State in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl. New logo there as well, as it's now no longer the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, it's the Verbo Fiesta Bowl, so a uh, little bit of a logo change. Moving into the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, which is your other playoff semifinal. Again, no change from this past week as well, and I'll re-explain my thinking for those of you that didn't watch my video last week. So Georgia I have here at number one, uh, and uh, as the number one, you get to pick where you go. Of course, Georgia's going to want to go to Atlanta to play in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, Gives them the most home field advantage type S as it's basically in their backyard. But Georgia's playing some really good football right now. I mean, Stetson Bennett, a uh, plethora of playmakers on the offensive end. The defense is playing really well as well. Um, so I like Georgia to run through the schedule, but there are still tricky games, right? You still have to play Kentucky and Mississippi State on the road. Florida is coming up this week. You got Tennessee coming up later here as well. So make no mistake, there's a lot of places where Georgia can trip up. Right now, I just don't necessarily, don't necessarily think that is the case. So I got Georgia being that number one team uh, and picking that Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Meanwhile, Michigan. Now, if you didn't watch my video last week, uh, I basically had boiled down the number four spot to two teams, and that was Michigan and Tennessee. I did not include Alabama in there because there's just something about Bama that I just don't trust, and I think we saw it in that game against Tennessee Um Definitely didn't see it last week against Mississippi State. Boy, did they look good there uh, and dominant. But we definitely saw it against Tennessee. Just something about this Bama team that you can't really t trust them quite yet, right? But when I look at when I look at Michigan and Tennessee and that d debate, I 100% think Michigan is a better team than Tennessee. That's why I have Michigan at number three in my poll ahead of, uh, of Tennessee. I think Michigan's uh, more capable of playing better complementary football as Tennessee, we know they have one of the best offenses in the country, and I'm not quite sure that defense can keep pace quite yet. So once Tennessee is able to face a, a defense, maybe like the likes of Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson, Michigan, the four teams I have in my playoff field, they're going to be able to slow down that offense even a little bit. And again, Bama couldn't, which maybe that means, well, really who can if Bama couldn't. Um, but there are a lot of good defenses out there. Look at the four teams in my, my playoff field, and I just feel like Michigan's a more balanced team overall. I think they have a better defense, much better defense, uh, and their offense, while necessarily isn't better, 
plays a better style of complementary football. That's why I got Michigan here in my playoff field as the number four team and facing Georgia in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Let's move on to the rest of my New Year's Six Bowl game predictions. No change here in the Capital One Orange Bowl. Again, just something I don't trust about Alabama right now, so that's why I have them here in the Orange Bowl. Um, they still got some tricky games on the schedule. You got to go on the road to play at LSU. Ole Miss still on that schedule. Uh, and then, of course, you have Auburn in the Iron Bowl. So still some interesting games coming up here for Alabama. Uh, they are on by this week. So we will see how Bama is able to uh, prepare and get ready for this game coming up against LSU on November 5th. I mean, Bama's still a really good football team. Make no mistake about it. Bryce Young is really good. Jameer Gibbs is really good. Will Anderson might be the best player in all of college football. But there's just something that I don't trust about Bama. Can't put him in the playoff spot. Meanwhile, Wake Forest being that second best team out of the ACC. Uh, and I think they absolutely showed that last week against Boston College. Although I will say this. Syracuse is making that climb towards possibly... They're definitely in contention to get to a spot in a New Year's Six Bowl game. They're going to have to uh, win some games and pull out some wins here down the stretch. But Syracuse absolutely has a path to a New Year's Six Bowl game. Uh, Clemson and Wake... Or excuse me, Syracuse and Wake Forest, I believe, still have to play. So... That'll be interesting to want to see how it plays out, but Sam Hartman and that offense playing well. The, that defense is improving as well, so I like Wake Forest still to get to the Capital One Orange Bowl as we move on. Slight change to my Sugar Bowl prediction. I still got Tennessee here. I think Tennessee is one of the best teams in the country, and they may, may very well have the best offense in the entire country, and possibly a top 10 NFL draft pick in Hendon Hooker. He's playing lights out this year. He is playing so oh so well, um, and Tennessee is just rolling, and I got him facing the TCU Horn Frogs, a game that I've actually been talking to a lot of people about, that I've been thinking, look, if these two teams get on the field, I think we're going to see a really good game, because TCU has got a really good offense there as well, and Max Duggan's playing some of the best ball that he's ever played. TCU's got a lot of really good running backs. They're weaponizing Quentin Johnson now, and he is playing like a first-round NFL draft pick. That defense, while it's the, the statistics aren't necessarily fantastic, it is performing when it needs to. And TCU's had a couple very nice come-from-behind wins. And I think right now they're the best team in that Big 12. Um, because if you look at the Big 12 right now and you think who is that best team, I think some people are still going to say Texas. They might not even make the Big 12 championship. Some people may still say Oklahoma State, even though TCU came back and beat them. Some people may even go out of their way to say Baylor or so, something like that. But TCU, I fully believe, as of right now, has proven themselves to be the best team in the Big 12. Uh, and that's why I got TCU here in the All-State Sugar Bowl as your conference champ. Moving on to the Cotton Bowl. Again, another slight change here. I had Oregon here last week. And I'm going to move USC down in here. And there's a, a good reason for that. It happens uh, to be um, associated with the team that I actually just name-dropped. Uh, there a, a little bit ago, but we'll talk about them here on th the next slide. USC still playing some really good football. Again, that lone loss is in conference play to Utah. USC got some tough games coming up though as well. You still got to play UCLA. Notre Dame is on the schedule there as well. I know a lot of people are counting out this Notre Dame team, but Marcus Freeman and his squad can put together, a, a, are capable of putting together a team that can play. Uh, and then I got the winner of the group of five spot here in the Cincinnati Bearcats going to the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. Cincinnati, since Houston's demise uh, with uh, the UCF loss last week against e East Carolina and the way Cincinnati was able to beat at SMU, I think Cincinnati and then maybe Tulane back there, definitely the best two teams in the group of five, and they play on November 25th, uh, and we possibly could see a rematch of that game in the American Championship there as well. Cincinnati's got a tough one coming up though with y UCF and if Cincinnati can win that game this week I think they will all but cement themselves as the bona fide favorite in the group of five conversation. They got to get past a really tough opponent in the bounce house in the Knights of UCF first but as of right now I do have Cincinnati as that group of five champion and the Rose Bowl. Penn State here, as I have Ohio State and Michigan both making the college football playoffs. So the best team out of the Big 12 or the Big 10 remaining. In my eyes is Penn State. Now you could throw Illinois 
into the Rose Bowl here as well. But I believe with Ohio State Michigan making uh, the playoff, uh, I do believe that Penn State will be that sec or that third best team out of the Big Ten Conference. Illinois playing some good football right now, but I just feel like Illinois is a little more vulnerable than Penn State is. Penn State would definitely have uh, the better resume and has the tougher schedule overall. And their only two losses this year, they've only lost one to Michigan. Their other loss may very well come this week against o Ohio State as the Buckeyes are big 15 and a half point favorites. Uh, but Penn State, I mean, they have all they need to go ahead and beat Ohio State next week. They got to play really well to do it, but that's going to be a really good test, not only for Penn State, but for the Buckeyes as well. And then slight change here. I got the Oregon Ducks, who now have moved into the front seat uh, as my Pac-12 champ. I still had USC here for the past couple of weeks. My mind has changed. Oregon looked really good in that game against UCLA. And ever since that loss to Georgia in week one, Oregon has just been rolling. They are on fire. Bo Nix is playing with his hair on fire. Uh, that defense is something else right now. Um, Oregon's just playing some really good football. And to this point in time, I believe that that is your Pac-12 champ. So there is your um, annual Rose Bowl game. The granddaddy of them all. I got between the Nittany Lions and the Ducks. Uh, and there's my playoff and New Year's Six Bowl game prediction. Here is a reminder of how I have the playoff bracket shaping out. Got Georgia and Michigan in the Chick-fil-A Fiesta, or in, in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. My apologies uh, as that 1-4 matchup. And then Ohio State and Clemson in the Verbo Fiesta Bowl as that 2-3 matchup. And I think right now, Ohio State and Georgia are on a collision course for that national champ. I think far and away, well, maybe not far and away, but I think those are the best two teams in college football right now. And that's definitely why they're number one and number two in this prediction there as well. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, subscribe, or anything you can help support the channel. But if you want to take away one thing from this video, remember to play hard, tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.